Hey guys, so welcome back to the channel. I have another interesting video here. This time working on a BMW 550i. Uh, the customer concern is a whole bank of injectors is not working. For those that doesn't know, this is an N62 engine. So you have eight coils and eight injectors. Everything is completely separate. So it is in the computer. The computer is a DME. This is the actual case for the computer. It was open. No matter what, these ones are pretty easy to open. Uh, they have just yes, minimum uh, heat uh, dissipation as far as glue, let's say, right? Because, I mean, the dissipation is really good. Let me just get some light in here. But as you can see, it's just attached in here. There is no silicone on the casing or anything. So it's pretty easy to take it apart. Uh, they took it apart on the shop because they said it was some water intrusion. They have concerns with the vehicle only working bank two or bank one. I'm not really sure because he didn't send me a text or anything. We just spoke, you know, he's a local. So he talked to me and he told me that they have that issue. A whole bank is not working and they said it's coils. Uh, they said that already tried injectors and they swap coils and stuff like that and, and it's not working. All right, so what I want to share with you is the test that I'm doing because I honestly don't find anything wrong with the computer. Again, um, let me start the screen recording so we can see that as well in a better way. All right, guys, I got the um, Kurt Tracer ready to go because I'm going to use that tool for the testing. So I'm going to put the phone in a tripod. So just bear with me one second. Trying to give you the best view possible since I had that um, chance to put the screen recording. We can then put the phone in a tripod and I don't have to be holding everything. I'm using the DJI microphone this time and I'm recording actually with the phone and the system and then also I'm using the DJI Mac mic in here and when you have that red light it's recording. I like this one because it's very very nice, very mobile, no setup necessary. I got the actual uh, receiver in the phone so I can record in the phone as usual, you know, in any microphone you connect or I can have a backup right now with the mic in my pocket. Uh, let me see. Yes, you guys got a, a good view in there. Sometimes I think the light is too much and it's not. Let me actually set up this light in here. Perfect. All right, so we have the screen recording going perfectly. Um, as usual, I do my homework. Uh, things that I'm going to recommend everybody that is using um, or working in BMW is to get yourself Ista. Um, you can get the original. Uh, get online. It's like in my case, I all I'm using Ista right now is for information. So if I close this, this down, let me just uh, show you what I can, you know, what I'm talking about. This is, you know, again, this is the latest. I actually updated it today, and I'm not doing any diagnostics, but I can use the full information that Ista, BMW information, you know, integrated service technical information. That's what Ista is stands for and you can see it here so ISTA right ISTA is those what it mean um, I can open the same vehicle that I was using just now this is the big number as you can see I've been working on this for a while and I can just click in here and open the operation when you're working on ISTA for those that are not that familiar uh, if you guys are interested in something like that let me know uh, I am very familiar with ISTA I'm not as you know uh, master of ISTA, but I use it every day. So I consider myself very versatile when it's about this. So you can go in here. Uh, you got repair information. And again, so you get, it's very important that you get familiar with like what group 11, 12, and all this means. Because if I'm using, again, the original information and I click right here where it says air, this will open the web browser and it's going to take me as it's doing now with the VIN number and everything ready to go for this vehicle 
and I can, you know, check wire diagrams and the same thing that I'm using in ISTA. The only thing is when you use the wire diagrams in air, again, the web-based information, you don't get the documents that I'm going to show you in a second. But you, when you are here, you can check for parts. Again, this is all the groups. The reason you'll see in this different is because I'm using Windows 11. Windows 11 is still not fully supported by ISTA or BMW software, but it's actually for what I need information wise and everything is working perfectly. So I use it and I like that. Uh, you can buy a day, you can buy a month, or you can buy a year subscription. Uh, again, when you try to look into BMW technical information, that will tell you how much that is. And again, that's why it's so important to go and find out what you know, Group 11 is and 12 and so on, right? So going back to this here, this is the same thing that you have in here. That you have in here. And so if, if I want to replace, let's say, you know, the, uh, the uh, oil sump. Uh, let me just... I don't know where my glasses are, so bear with me a little bit. I might just pass it. Oil supply, oil pump with strainer. It's funny because sometimes they call this oil pump and sometimes they call it oil sump. So, but again, if it's not always on the same uh, area, you can see this is for the N62 and the N62TU. Again, if I click in here, I can get all the information that is necessary as far as torques, uh, sequence, and all the stuff that is very important when you're doing a work like this. So, so I click all these a 2AC and stuff like that is, uh, you will be looking at 2AC. So, because this is going to open, you see like here, it opens 1AC, 2AC, and so on. So this is for these engines. N42, N40, N45. I'm not even sure why this is in here. Maybe I selected the wrong one. Because it says 2AC. Remember R, oh, it's weird to say, I, I didn't see this on the bottom. So you got the N62 to you, and then you can, you need to understand also that you're gonna have bolts with different thickness. So the M8 and M6, M6 is obviously less thicker bolt or screw, in this case are bolts, they will most likely will have a stamp is there 8.8 and that is the hard the hardness of the steel and or if they're 10 point 10.9 10 and that changes the the, the you know the time all right so going back i got a little hard for me to see because i got the camera right there but going back to what we're doing today i will go over to uh troubleshooting I can go into component structure and components you will find you know all the com uh, computers and everything always try to not go and select specifically what you're looking for and this is very important when you're working with this information if you try to look for like let's say the dme which sometimes is a6000 uh, and most of the bmws if you try to go for that one and it, it might you might not find it so just click on the control units and let it build the data you're going to look for uh, SSP. Those are uh, uh, wiring diagrams. I took a class with my friend Justin Morgan. He is probably one of the best guys. If you want to take classes, I recommend take BMW 101 class with Justin Morgan. He is for me one of the best guys out there that can teach you about BMWs and software and he knows what he's doing. He's been doing this. He does uh, um, remote, uh, let's say programming, yes, because there's other programming and BMWs and everything, but they have also remote requests for folds and everything. He knows what he's doing. So I took his class and what I like and I keep this always with me is because you can see what that means on, you know, fuses and they really did a nice, a nice class, you know, with all the colors and these are going to be in Germany, you know, in German, uh, some of the uh, wiring diagram symbols that we'll see in there. And then what I was looking for is right here. I'm going to just pass it. So this is what I want to share with you. So SSP is wiring diagram. And that's what you, you, you saw also in there, the EVO. Let me just go up to the tab. So we got in here, what is this EVO means? So EVO is installation location. You have to, you know, like this is, I, I like to keep this with me for, you know, refresh my memory. Remember, I'm not being a BMW technician for all my life. I was working with 
or brands pretty much, or guys that are working in BMWs every, you know, since they started their career, they will know this like that, but not all of us. So that's why I like to keep this handy, share it with you, and also put a plug in for Justin Morgan, LMB Bavarian, and this uh, uh, Train Mobile Pro there. If you see a class with them, take it, take it. BMW 48 volts, excellent, excellent class. I will take it every single time, again and again, because you know what? I always believe that it doesn't matter if you took like the class already, because it's not the same people in the class every time. So the questions are going to be, uh, in that day are not the same questions that you had the time before. So the answers that Justin or like, you know, whatever class you're taking, I'm referring to Justin because that's exactly what I was thinking or talking about. Like if I go over to his class again and somebody makes a different question, his answers are going to be based on what the people ask. So you will gather a lot more information than what you really think. Oh, one-on-one -on -one class, I already took it. I don't know everything. No, you don't know everything. Believe me, it's very important. All right, again, I always try to express and evolve the information as I go on the videos try to share as much as information with you. All right, so we're going to go over to, again, the SSP again, and we're gonna look for DME, as you saw, it's, it's indeed A6000. I usually select either one. You can select either one of those, and I'm gonna show you why, let's say, because when you click here, this is nice about air or here. Like if I click in here, this is going to open the documents. You see how now this is also highlighted. If I click in here, it's gonna let me go over to either or uh, either of those uh, wire diagrams that we saw before. So for now, this is good enough for me. I can select the pin assignment, which is what I'm really looking for. And I know that, uh, let's say first, the test that I'm going to do because of his concerns is coil. So I can actually, Going to documents and I'm going to go over it. I think it's in, in one, it's in one and four. Let me just see. Nope, let me close this one. If you close that, doesn't matter. We can open it again. So again, we go here, documents. It's not in, in four and it's not in one. So let's go to, this is oxygen sensors. You can click in here and when you click in here, I don't know why it doesn't immediately, that it will show you what that B62101 and opens where the location is. So again, we can go into full screen. Let's go to documents. Oh, no, I have to select in here. Let me see. Yes, so we got one, two, three. Let's display three. I'm looking for the ignition coils. No, it's not. So, hmm. I'm not going in order, trying to go fast, and sometimes that is not the correct way. So we got one, two, three, four, so maybe it's in five. Yes, <laughs> the last one, right? Okay, so actually, you know what, I, th I should have thought about that. Let me just go back, um, let me click here, because I think that one, two, three, four, and five is connector one, two, three, four, and five. Because five is the connector we are right now, right? So let me just go, and see because in connector three as uh, x6003 is where the injectors are so if that is the case you're going to tell me how i know that well i can show you if you go over to the pin assignments and we go over to connector x603 uh, we can see that pin six seven eight and eleven are injectors and then uh 13 24 25 and 26 are the injector signals. Believe me, I've been mean, digging this information and I know exactly what I'm talking about. So if we go over to pin six and X603, again, uh, that's, when you're working with the information, if, look, if you click in here and you click full screen, it's gonna open the pinouts. Again, you go off of, of full screen, you click the diagram and now you click full screen and you go back to the wiring diagram. You can zoom in and we're looking for connector X603, so make sure um, what is up in the tab. I just wanna know what is up in the tab, I should just use this. So they're all X603, so we're looking for six, seven, and eight. That is going to tell me uh, where the injectors are. 
Okay, we got them right here. So these are all Ys, our injectors. So we got all the eight injectors in here. So injector one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. So this is the injector location. So uh, this is perfect. So yes, that's what the DME ones, two, and three, four, five means is the connector on the computer, at least on this vehicle. And another nice thing, if I close this and now I go over to, um, um, let's say, you know, function structure, I want to see how the injectors and how the coils work, what is actually the strategy on the computer. I can go over to see what, you know, what inject, uh, coils are in bank one. Obviously it's gonna be one, two, three, and four. Remember the way the manufacturers uses to select bank one is whatever cylinder one is. And the order bank is where cylinder one is not, <laughs> okay? All right, so same thing for the injectors. Um, so we, we can see here, we can, if you select this, it's going to open up a different wire diagram. The reason I'm clicking in all this is because you see these arrows in here, if I click back, it's going to go to every document that we have open and I can go back to the last one. And now we got injectors, uh, sorry, the ignition coils. And in here, we can not just see the activation, we can also see where the power supply is coming for all those injectors. We have a splice. If I click in here, that's going to show me where that splice is, X6831. So if we look into this view right here, A6831, it's telling me that it's under the cover of that plastic. For those that are very familiar with the injector, I mean with the BMW, we know that this is the Valtronic motor. That's the intake on the top of the car. And then we have the coils at the bottom and then we have a plastic, uh, you know, the, it's like the wire loom for the coils. So it's, uh, it's um, a splice in there. And then the, the power for this one comes from the integrated supply module, which is next to the computer. This is the A6009. Uh, again, for those that are familiar with the, uh, with these vehicles, it's just this fuse box that is next to the computer. We got the computer in here and that's what we have in here. All right, so again, I'm trying to show and share as much as information. So again, the information that I wanna hear is here. The function description is telling me, you know, what the faults are being detected or not by the computer. Can they see secondary, primary, and they do. They have chunks, as you can see here, short circuits and current chunks on the secondary and in the primary side. So these are, it's a very smart system. So that's why I'm going to have to Talk to Nick, that's his name for this computer, and request a little more because he told me oh, Bank One is not working, but I don't have any fault codes or anything to go by. And these are very smart systems. So I want to know what does they did or not in order to condemn a computer because honestly, I don't see anything wrong with in, in this computer. All right, if I go back in here, we can go back, um, not too much. Actually, if I close in here, I can go on to bank two, open the same thing for wire diagram. I can close that and the function description is gonna be the same. If I go and do the same for injectors, which I want to have all that open, again, we now know that in, obviously the DME is in control of those injectors, all injectors, and the same integrated supply module, the IBM, that's how it's called, is in control of supplying the power and we have Another splice, the X6823. X6, oh, uh, that is on the top next to the Valtronic motor, obviously because the injector, this is the intake manifold, are on the top, right? Okay, so if we go over to number two, I wanted to just again gather all this information because as I said before, I can now come back all here and I got all the information that I opened, very handy, ready for, for us, ready for, for me to use it. Okay, so, I can also, I have the file ready for this vehicle. So I got all those in there. Um, I did my homework. As you guys saw, I selected the uh, wire diagrams, the, uh, I, the pin assignments. I just take a picture with, you know, using uh, Paint 3D and I can select uh, the injectors. I forgot to select, you know, two in here, but I did it after when I was using it with a curb tracer, and you'll see that in a second. Um, all these that are here, test points for curb tracer are the tests that I was doing on this computer, and I'm going to share with you how to use a curb tracer to facilitate 
and test the computer that you are not able to run because I would really like to have everything to run this computer but remember this has a CAS this has a ignition system that a immobilizer that I cannot reproduce just with the computer so I can still do the test if I use a curve tracer and I'm going to share that with you again the computer is clean I don't see any water damage or anything that tells me otherwise so what I'm going to do now I'm going to bring this down and we have right here the uh, Curve Tracer software. Uh, again, I know that people is going to ask me what is a Curve Tracer, please read in here, it tells even the, the um, product number you can look into is, is UCECT220S. Just look for it online, I don't sell it. I tried to work with a company because it's a good company but they have their own policies and I don't um, I don't go a, a part of that, so I'm not selling it. All right, so let me just check in here, make sure that everything is being recorded. It seems like yeah, everything is being recorded. All right, guys, so when I'm using the Curve Tracer, uh, you can use two probes, which is going to be two alligators, you know, like a ground, because make sure that when you're working in a computer that you want to use a curve tracer, you have let it dissipate or dissipate the capacitor, so it's not going to damage this equipment. Uh, you can have, again, two probes, and you can change the selections in here. My uh, regular uh, selections, you can change it on the screen. Uh, everything that you see here with buttons is also in there. Uh, you can uh, put, uh, the only thing you cannot change in there is, is mode one and mode two which is dual or the scan uh, this is just you know ranges that you can also uh, if you want you can connect this to an oscilloscope in an XY mode and it's going to give you what we have in the screen in there I think it's not really necessary I like it the way it is with the scope you can tweak a little more the image but realistically this is perfect all right so these are the settings that I have I usually go to advanced mode I use enable database that is going to let me first load an image so I'm going to load the image that I used before this is first with the upper board with markings so you're gonna see that I already select all the drivers for the coils and I have different uh, um, points in here if I go over to the file for this computer uh, upper board with markings in here so we can see this a little bigger you can see that I just I put the the pin connectors again this is for me easier to see wh which each connector is this connectors if you go like and you see the, the where the pins are in the computer you will see pin one I mean connector one two three four five so it's it's well marked but it's I like to put it on the images so I don't have to really think on on what I'm doing I can just follow quickly the test uh, you can see that I take again paint 3D and I put you know all these are all these black ones are just ground these are uh, IGBTs controlled by the computer and I'm going to show that in a second that this is actually controlled directly by the computer this is an IGBT it's a very robust um, transistor that can take up you know up to 400 volts is a very very uh, strong uh, driver for for this and it can take a lot of amperage so oh, this is very well protected very well designed by BMW uh, so I uh, select the test on the on the coils on the front and then I go over to the gate on the uh, transistor and I follow the pad as you can see if I follow right here we got an X a diamond a star it's a little hard to see on the picture but it, this is like a star a brown star with like a red dot we got a green arrow all those are in here because all these paths will follow they go through a hundred ohm resistor in here but they follow this path in here and they go over to the other side of the board just to show you and share a little information on this computer with you all right going back to what we're doing in here so we got that image in here now I'm going to load the data so I'm going to load first the coils as you can see I got all these ready to go I can do this automatically so as you can see now then I click an automatic it puts right here an image you can see it also here this is the same and this is zoom so if I touch in there oh, I have to go over to the other side of the board 
And let me just flip this like this. Put my glasses on. Remove this cable so it's not in our way. Hopefully you guys are seeing all this good. But yeah, if I click in here, hopefully, well, I don't think you guys will be able to hear that, but it gives me an okay. And you'll see the result at the end. So I go over to number two. Now number three. Number four. Number five. Number six. Number seven. And number eight. Now I'm going to go over to the actual uh, control side. So right here, call. Perfect. Then now the other side, that's just a ground, so I'm just going to use this one. I know it's good because it's a little hard to get. I can go now into four here in the control. And then the ground. If I, I'm going to make a mistake on purpose so you can see that this is, because I know it's going to pass, but so the computer is now looking for the ground on, on, on coil driver three, but I'm going to touch the other pin. You see that red around? See? Hopefully you can see this in here. See how I put that in red? It's not letting me go past because it's, it's bad. Obviously, if I touch what this is looking for, it pass, it pass. I'm going to seven. Number two. Okay, number eight is nine now. Perfect. We're gonna go to number six here. Again, if it's not perfectly, it will. See, test completed. So this is what I done on all the injectors, I mean, sorry, coil drivers on this side, the test is completed. This pass, all of these drivers are all the same. And I can show you if I don't select this test and let's say, you know, I just select coil A, like that is the image we had in coil A. Now it's, in, it's not an auto test. See, if I, if I click, uh, put that in here, see, it's the same. I go here. Is the same, is the same, is the same. I'm going into different drivers. Hopefully you guys can see that at the same time. I'm gonna put the image very close. But so, he's saying that we have four drivers or four injectors that are not working at all. Or sorry, not four injectors, four coils. I'm gonna to have to get quiet because dog is talking too much. All right, so he's saying the four of the coils are not working. We will see a huge difference in here. I don't, I'm not seeing that. So these drivers are all perfect. It's impossible that these drivers are giving him issue because it's definitely not because of this. Or so I can, um, I can load another test. test. So in this case, uh, let me see. Yeah, I can now. All right, guys, I switch microphone just to make sure that everything is going correct. So I'm going to close this software just to show you again. Um, you can just go over to either one of those. Let me just go over to the core tracer. I have it on D. And then core tracer software and click on it. It's no installation. It runs from the software, so that's it. All right, again, I go into advanced mode, enable database. I'm going to load the image. Now this time I'm going to load the image on the other side because these are the underboard tests now. 
I did all the tests on the upper side of the board. And now we're going to move into this area. Again, let me show you that image on a closer look so you can see what is in there. So the underboard. I don't like keeps opening that one, but anyway. So again, I selected the injectors. So we had, and I put, I always put, you know, uh, all these are the pins. Again, injectors are in X66, X6303, and the coils are in the connector five. That's as much as I need. I will follow the test for these coils because the coils will go from the other side, coming onto this side. Okay, like uh, what I was saying, so uh, injector are in connector three and coils are in, in, in connector number five. I have, as you can see here, um, what each coils are based on this signs or not even in um, um, symbols that I use so I can follow later on the same thing. Uh, again, they come from the other side where the drivers are through these pins and then through these capacitors in here straight to the microprocessor. So the microprocessor in full control of the of the coils. And why is because they're IGBTs. Injectors on the other side were again on this connector number three. And again, pins six, seven, eight, uh, 11, 12, and 13. Uh, let me just see, did I make a mistake in here? That's 11 and 13. One. So six, seven, eight, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11. 11, yes, 11, 13. I forgot to put the marks in here for the other ones. Oh, it's not an error. It's not an error. So let me see. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Yeah, if I click, it's just I'm, I'm a little far away. It's no error. You see how I put this uh, the signals on top of the pins itself? So we got 13, yes, and we have 24, 25, and 26. So 24, 25, and 26, all right? So those are, these are the injector drivers. They are not just for the injectors, they're going to do a lot, a lot more, but these controls injectors directly. And then obviously the microprocessor will send a signal for those activations. But as far as the test that I can do is from there to here. So that's why that's what we're doing on this one. Again, with the database on here, I can now load uh, load the, the data. We're going to go over to test for coils. And this is going to load again the test. I can do it automatically. And it's going to show me where to put the next part of the test. So I have to flip the uh, board around. And I'm going to look for that. So um, hopefully, I, yes, I am doing the recording. So the cross in here is telling me that I have to go here are the capacitors you can see that here and here and then I got a close a closer image of where I have to, to pick so it's the first one that I need to pick is the one on this side so perfect so we're going to two and that is the upper one and now the next one is the second one on this side. The next one is on this side. Make sure make good contact. Don't just dim, you know, uh, component bed until you test it a few times. As you saw before, it said it was better. That was doesn't. Yeah, I wasn't making good connection. But yeah, as you can see, they're all good, and the test pass. So, and I'm gonna show you the same thing. If I select either one of those now that I'm not doing the test, and I click on each of those capacitors, what I want you to see is the image on the screen, 
how is now the yellow behind the red. Again, the red is the save data. And then the, the image that we have value reading is the yellow, which is now behind. And it's a perfect image. So all these coil drivers and all these all the way to the microprocessor is intact. So if he has a problem that, I mean, with no fold codes, it's pretty hard to uh, help him. But I can say that we have no issues on the computer. I don't. I only. I honestly don't suspect a computer being damaged with no components bad. Uh, if an injector goes bad, if a uh, if a coil driver goes bad, it will damage one driver, not four drivers. This is not a batch fire system. It's an individual driver for each coil, an individual driver for each injector. But still, I want to share with this, uh, with you all this. I'm going to do now the injector so I can load the data. Now I'm going to do the test for the injectors. And I can do an auto test. You can see now the, the red image is different and it's telling me where to go is at the bottom on the eight pin. And that I'm going to use the microscope because it's, I gotta get to the exact pin. That's for injector number one. So I'm going to count, we'll say A, right? Yes. Mm -hmm. So it's not really well. In this case, it, it is eight because we got a, a dot pin in here. So it is eight. But as you see on the other images, I put eight. I'm just counting from the edge to the eighth or nine. Not realistically, the numbers, the correct numbers on the IC. Okay. So eight, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Perfect. Number two is on the upper one and is the ninth. So three, six, once again, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Perfect. Uh, that's now number eight, so one less. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And it's perfect. Uh, now injector number four is at the bottom and is the ninth pin. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Perfect. Number five is in the same IC, but the eighth pin on the tap. You see now I'm going on the bottom IC, the eighth pin from this corner in. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And it passed. As you can see, now number seven is on P9 on the upper one, lower end. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Perfect. And then the last one is in the same, no, it's in the bottom one, the upper nine pin. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Come on. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Perfect. And the test is concluded. And it's the same, so we I see absolutely no issues with this tool. If it's a loose pin, a loose solder or anything, you will detect it immediately. This will not, like if you use continuity, in this case, it will, you can put continuity from here from, from here to there, and it will tell you, yes, it's, it's not a broken path or anything, but the load of the uh, multimeter is not the same low that we're putting with a cartracer. This is actually injecting a higher voltage that is still protected for uh, components. But if it's anything loose, you will see because this is very, very unique on the way that I can see diode centers, resistors, capacitors, and so. So if you have a, a kind of like, a, let's say, you know, not a, a fully loose connection, you will see a different image compare, you know, injector to injector, injector to injector. So you will be comparing one to the other. And that's what I usually do at the end of the test. I can select either one. And I can go back into all these ones 
yes picking up anything i'm going to number 18 89 in here so one two three four five six seven eight see the image is exactly the same if i go over to nine which i know is the same the image is exactly the same and believe me i already test they're all the same so in order to have either four bed injectors or fed four bed coils i will be immediately seeing in here and that's not the case so we definitely have something else i need either more information from him in order to try to help him but as far as i can see the computer is perfect all right guys so hopefully this is good for nick again on testing on injectors and coils on an n62 computer with a bosch dme and this is the part number seven six hundred nine two three this is again the bosch and if you want the bosch part number is zero two six uh let me put my glasses two six one two nine four seven eight you will need all this to match in order to work for the same vehicle and then we can clone it or so, right? But again, this is not the case on this computer. Very nice, very clean, no corrosion. All right, guys, I'm not going to take more time from you. Hopefully you all like this information that I'm trying to share how to use, not just this core tracer, any core tracer can help you. If you take the time and do it with each computer you work, try to map the, the most, uh, problematic areas market on the board that will make you the next time to make faster and faster and faster so you can produce you know you can work you know and make more money all right guys thank you so much for for visiting the channel i will see you next time sometimes i know that i don't show on the camera but sometimes i'm trying to focus on the um the repair and not on the conclusion but i think it's very also very important for me to show and uh and say how much you uh, how much i appreciate all of you being my followers and my subscribers and thank you so much for those that i see in uh ambition if we go into any training you see me you want to stop by and say hi i really love that it really makes me happy to see young techs and not young on text too uh liking my information uh, if i make a mistake please forgive me i try always to read and study before i share what I want to share with you all. All right, see you next time. Bye-bye.